Okay. So we are live. Uh, here it is on Sunday afternoon, uh, 2.21 my time. I don't often do videos on Sunday, you know, because it seems like whenever I do a, a Sunday video, it doesn't get a lot of views for whatever reason. But I've got so much stuff coming up this week after what, what seems like a drought of stuff to unbox. Like uh, a bunch of my G.I. Joe classifieds that I'd pre-ordered on Amazon. They're starting to show up. This is the first one. It's a uh, Cobra Dreadnought Buzzer. So uh, I've got uh, also his fellow Dreadnought Ripper on the way. Should be here tomorrow. As well as one of my favorite G.I. Joe characters, Shockwave. I like Shockwave so much that I've already made my own custom G.I. Joe classified Shockwave. So when I open that figure, we'll, we'll compare the two. Uh, the one that I made versus the one that Hasbro made. But yeah, I don't, I don't normally get a lot of clicks on videos that I record on Sunday for whatever reason. I don't know why. It, 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 but if I put up a video on Sunday, it gets it gets less views than than any others. So maybe this one will be different. If you're watching this video and you enjoy it, maybe you could share it on your social media and make sure that uh, people get a look at this video because I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, I think I'm I'm going to enjoy unboxing this guy and and having a look at him. So uh, without further ado, let's get on with the review. I want to do one more thing first though. Because I know that somewhere around here, I have either a Tomax or a Zamot. I've got to have one because I've got so many Tomax and Zamot figures that I've bought for various customs, and I just want to have one because I want to. I want to compare their arms. All right, so here we go. I found one, and this one is Zamot because he has the scar. So let me get his uh. His gun into his hand there. That looks like the silencer fell out of it, but who cares? But uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so let's set him aside. I want to compare their arms. I'm suspecting that they probably reuse the same arms. Maybe uh, maybe some other parts. I don't know. But I, I'm figuring um, that's probably... I don't know what, they what else they would have recycled on him. Maybe the legs are from like a Cobra officer or Flint or something like that the boots look new but we're, we're, we're gonna have a look at this when we take it out of the package so uh i really like the photograph that they have on the front of this box there's all kinds of easter eggs here you've got uh, a a cold slither poster up here and uh cold slithers instruments in the background uh cold slither being one of the more popular episodes of the gi joe cartoon show where uh they were kind of making fun of uh the satanic panic and back masking in uh, hair metal music at the time. And, uh, you know, so so uh, Cobra actually had a scheme where Zartan and the Dreadnoughts disguised themselves as a band called Cold Slither. And they were actually putting subliminal messages into the music. So, and fans of the comic will notice that it is a gas station as the Dreadnoughts uh, hangout was a gas station. And uh, they had a few gas stations they hung out in, or basically squatting in them, I think. Sometimes, like, if, if uh, Zartan had some kind of headquarters picked out for him, he would even use his uh, holographic technology to make it look like a gas station so that the Treadnoughts would feel a little more at home. But, uh, but yeah, and then you've got the, uh, of course, ubiquitous grape soda cans scattered all around because the Dreadnoughts in the comics are known for their their love of grape soda. I don't see any packages for chocolate covered donuts though. And that's the traditional dreadnought snack, of course, is uh uh chocolate covered donuts washed down with some grape soda. <laughs> to me just sounds disgusting. <laughs> Those seem like they wouldn't be flavors that would go together at all. I love the artwork also on this package where uh uh buzzer just his face just looks disgusting to me, and like he's got this this really just just sinister, sadistic grin on his face. So uh, that's that that's nicely done. That's as I think of the character. Uh, Buzzer is actually uh, my favorite of the Dreadnoughts, at least you know besides Zartan himself. 
and uh, Zarana. So, like, yeah, with the, the Dreadnoughts, you've got Zartan and uh, his sister Zarana. And the three main Dreadnoughts besides them would be uh, the first three that came out as figures. Uh, Buzzer, which we have here. Ripper, who uh, had the, the really cool rifle with the big bayonet type blade on it. And uh, the Jaws of Life accessory that I never could figure out. <laughs> and uh, uh, Torch, whose weapon, of course, was a torch. Uh, Monkey Wrench would have been the next Dreadnought to come out on a single card. He was an explosive expert, uh, had a trident weapon for some reason. Uh, and you had, uh, what was the name that came with the Thunder Machine? Thrasher came with the Thunder Machine. And then uh, you had uh, Zanzibar, the Dreadnought Pirate, with his weird air skiff vehicle. And uh, uh, then you had the uh, Road Pig, uh, obviously, probably one of the more popular Dreadnought characters. And uh, they actually did. He's actually, other than Zartan himself, the only Dreadnought to get a second figure in the vintage line. So that should show you how popular Road Pig was at the time. And then you had, uh, I believe, the last Dreadnought figure released in the vintage line was... Uh, uh, the, the the poacher, uh, Zanzibar. No, not Zanzibar. Zanzibar was the pirate. It was uh, what was God, what was the name of the, the poacher? I'm drawing a blank on his name. I really like that character too because he kind of reminded me of Craven the Hunter uh, from Spider Man. Uh, why am I drawing a blank on his name? I'm really irritated that I'm drawing a blank on his name. Zanzibar was, was something with, was something started with a Z. I'm drawing a blank on it. Is there anyone else that I'm forgetting? I can't remember any other Dreadnoughts in the Vintage line. I just, I, I cannot remember another one drawn a complete blank for whatever reason. So I guess that's all of them. That must be all of them, right? That's all of them. Sure. Okay. Let's move on. <clears throat> we got some uh, cross-sell artwork on the back. We got a layout of the weapons. We got a, a fairly vanilla picture of the figure. Some details of the figure with the skull and crossbones, belt buckle, and uh, that snake tattoo reminiscent of the original figure so yeah that's pretty much that and then over here we've got the uh the qr code which one day i'll scan the qr code so i think that's everything we need to say about buzzer before we open them up so let's go ahead and open them up i'm not sure when they're going to start to have the package with the plastic window in them again but that is coming at some point these uh cardboard packages the, the plasticless packages are going to go the way of the dodo. And there is what Buzzer looks like inside of his little cardboard sleeve. You can get a good look at him there. And he's, he's looking at us kind of quizzically. Hmm. Can't quite figure us out. Buzzer, uh, one of the reasons he's, he's like my favorite of the Dreadnoughts is because the Dreadnoughts are all fairly stupid. I mean, like, they're, they're not intelligent guys. And uh, Buzzer actually is uh, an intellectual. He was a, a professor in, in England who came down to Australia to, to study biker gangs and, and basically went native and became one of them. So he's a, he's a fairly intelligent guy as far as the dreadnoughts go. And uh, many times Zartan or, or Zorana aren't around, he tends to default into leader mode as far as that goes and starts you know bossing around the other guys and, and coming up with uh with all their plans and whatnot and you can see the glasses aren't on them because they're going to be a, a separate piece that'll be in the accessories when they open that up so let me get all the stupid little rubber tabs cut here and then we can get buzzer out of the package and uh he does have the the ponytail he's got a nice ugly expression on his face and some some hard features unfortunately i don't think this expression is is quite as good as the one that's actually on the uh the artwork on the box i think that that one actually like i like that expression a little better because it just it fits the character so well this one seems a little more neutral a little more vanilla and normally i like to have more neutral vanilla expressions on characters faces but i kind of i, I just i just like that 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 expression on the artwork so much. I kind of wish 
dropped that and carried over the figure as well. I dropped the accessory box on the ground. So we'll pick that up in a second. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to compare, and you saw me pull that thing out, and I don't know where I put it now. I wanted to compare the arms on, uh, yeah, there it is right there. Uh, the arms on Tomax slash Zamot. And it does look like they are indeed the same arms. Uh, the same sculpt of the arms, at least uh, at least as far as like the deltoid and the bicep to me look the same. The forearms, this forearm looks the same, but this one I think might be slightly different, or it might just be the lighting. It, but they uh, they they did put some some arm hair onto Buzzer, which uh, Zaymot does not have. Maybe he does a little more manscaping. I don't know. Uh, he's got uh, little wristbands for his gloves. He's got this uh, nice thick watch over here. And then this one's just kind of like a little teeny tiny wristband. So it looks like the end of the gloves. But it is a separate piece. And when I when I pulled him out of the box, it was like way up on his arm like that. But it's supposed to be lower down here because it's supposed to be like the cuff of his glove. So and uh, they did something pretty clever, I think, with a uh, with, uh, buzzer. As far as the design of it goes, is that the original figure of Buzzer had these uh, black pads on his legs, and they've incorporated those in with the uh, knife sheath and the uh, pistol holster over here, so that uh, it's all one piece. So that way, they didn't have to make like uh, new legs for this guy. He could he could just reuse legs from somebody else, which I suspect I suspect these are Cobra Trooper or Cobra Officer mm -hmm. legs. One of the two. Let's see if I can get a hold of one. I suspect, yeah, they're they're, they're reuse of the. Well, they got different knee pads. No, they're not. They're not Cobra Officer. So I was thinking they might be, but they're not. I think they're they're probably reused from something else though. But I, I don't know exactly what they would be. So if you got some idea as to where these legs might have come from originally, let me know in the comments. I don't see any reason that they could have or should have. Uh, reused these these uh made brand new legs for them because I think you could just as easily take those legs off of something else. Here's rock and roll. Let me look at rock and roll's legs because they they're not rock and roll's legs. Uh, go all the way back to Flint. Compare his legs. I figured that wasn't it because Flint has uh the texture on his legs and he got his legs from Duke anyway. So, but yeah. Pretty good looking figure. We'll come back to him in a minute. I want to talk about the accessories some. So let's go ahead and do that. And we got the uh, box here. Dreadnought buzzer. There's the number. We're up to 106 figures in this line already. Or at least 106 boxes. Because, you know, some of those would have been two packs. Or come with animals. Do, do you count the animals as separate figures? Or do you count them as uh, just accessories? Because I know that, uh, you know, say with Freedom, who came with Spirit, like that was, you know, a regular size box. But do you still count him as a separate figure? Like, like I guess you could look at Snake Eyes and Timber as being a two-pack, because that was like a deluxe figure. So there's a chainsaw, a uh, pretty uh, standard-looking chainsaw. It's a lot different from the one that came with the original figure, where it was more like sort of he held it like a rifle, kind of. But uh, this one's got... Uh, Obviously, you would hold it more like a traditional chainsaw. So, but it does look kind of like a, not like a chainsaw, like you would go into a Home Depot and buy this. It looks like something that, uh, you know, would have had some customization to it. And unfortunately, mine is slightly warped. So I'll try to hit that with the hairdryer a little later to straighten that out. Hopefully it'll straighten out. I'm going to try to be really careful with these accessories. Because I know his, his sunglasses are in here, and I do not want to lose the sunglasses. So, again, here's one that's that's warped, and that's this axe that he comes with, which I think is kind of cool. It looks like it's cobbled together with uh, some kid's t-ball bat and some uh, buzz saws. Since he's buzzer, I guess that makes sense. And then this other flail-type weapon. Uh, that one came with the original figure, so that's an update on that. Uh, the, I want to say the original one, the, the chain was just kind of straight. 
And this one, they managed to give it like a little bit of a, a motion to it. And then we've got this pistol, this automatic pistol. Looks kind of like a Glock to me, but again, I'm not like an expert on firearms. So maybe somebody else in the comments can tell us exactly what kind of pistol it is. Got a small knife. So those obviously will go on the sheath and holster on his thighs. And last but not least, the sunglasses. Now, I've seen a lot of people talk about these sunglasses. They're kind of a controversial part. Because uh, apparently, like, for some people, they, they don't want to stay on his head very well. They get kind of warped in the package. So I'm going to try those on first thing. And I was actually able to get that side over his ear. And it seems like it's in there pretty well. And this other one. Yeah, I don't think that's going to stay on. No, it popped back out. It, it was staying in there for a second, but then it popped back out. So uh, I've seen like a lot of people say they don't like these sunglasses. Maybe it's because they have uh, black lenses. I'm going to hold them to his head. I don't want them to fall off. And the original toy had just pure silver glasses. But I guess they were trying to give it a little bit of texture to it. But they do look a lot like the way the glasses were drawn in the, uh, the comic book, where they have that kind of, I don't know what you call it, like, like at the side where it, like a piece that kind of makes it flush to the eyes, you see that on, on uh, sunglasses sometimes. Like I guess to keep the light out at the peripherals. Now I got it so it's staying on pretty well, but I wouldn't trust that if, uh, you know, you were going to put them into storage in a box or something. or You know, you might want to glue these glasses on if uh, – I don't need for the Dreadnoughts glasses to be removable. The original figure, the, the glasses were like solidly molded to the head. They almost never took off their glasses in the comics. I can't recall a time where they took off their glasses in the comics. Uh, I can't recall a time where they took off their glasses on the cartoon series, other than maybe if they got knocked off their motorcycle or something. So, so yeah, uh, I might just glue those on. I think I'm probably going to wind up gluing them on. I don't think that they're bad looking glasses, though. I know a lot of, like I said, a lot of people like had, had said they, they don't like the look of them from, from what I'd seen. I know uh, uh, Gridiron Studios was offering uh, some silver aviator glasses. Uh, this ponytail is not articulated, by the way. I just thought I'd check that real quick. But, uh, but yeah, but, 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 to me, Buzzer didn't wear aviators in the, the comic. He wore glasses that looked more like this one. So maybe the aviators would be closer to the original toy. I don't know. But uh, those, to me, look like the glasses from the comic. So I'm fine with those. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look at the rest of the accessories. I'm going to set the glasses aside because I don't want them to uh, uh, get misplaced. So looking at these, uh, these hands, I noticed something interesting is that his hands are kind of posed almost in like an archer kind of fashion with the two fingers extended. Maybe he's trying to flip us off because that's how they flip you off in England with the, the two fingers like that. <laughs> but I think they might have actually reused the... Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have it to compare. Uh, the the retro-carded uh, figure of Storm Shadow had bare hands. And I think they might have reused those bare hands. So, because it doesn't have any kind of detailing on it that makes it look like gloves. But let's go ahead and put the pistol in his hand, first of all. And there he is with the pistol. It's kind of a small little pistol. Like I said, I think it's supposed to be a Glock. The size of it reminds me of, a, of James Bond's Walther PPK. Because it's a little on the small side. But, uh... Not not the what you think of as the traditional James Bond Walter, but the ones like he had uh in the the Pierce Brosnan movies and in Tomorrow Never Dies and Forward. It looks kinda like that gun. And it does have a, a little bit of tape around the handle for the grip. So it's uh that that seems to me like very dreadnought esque. The dreadnoughts were obviously inspired by uh Mad Max which was a popular movie at the time. You had the, the first Mad Max and the Road Warrior. And that's why uh, 
I, I suspect that's why the original Dreadnoughts were mostly Australian. Not all of them, though, because, like I said, Buzzer is actually British, and uh, uh, Thrasher is an American. Even though he had a British accent on the or Australian accent, well, I forget what he have a British accent or Australian. It was probably a cod between the two of them because he was a poser. <laughs> Thrasher, Thrasher was an American. If you read the file card, so he shouldn't have any kind of like like accent other than like you know an American accent and uh, kind of a, a spoiled, rich, snotty kid accent as well. Hmm. But yeah, most of the dreadnoughts were Australian, but not Buzzer. Buzzer was British. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, have a look at this knife. And sometimes with these knives, especially the smaller ones, I notice they have a hard time fitting in the hands because the, the hands are too big to grip them. But we don't seem to be having a problem with this one. So that one fits at least in that hand just fine. Fits in the other hand just fine. This is probably the hand you would usually have it in because that's where the, the knife sheath is on the right thigh. So let's go ahead and put the knife in there. Boom. That's what that looks like. All right. So let's have a look at him with some of these other weapons. So let's go ahead. We'll start with this one since that's the one the original figure came with. And I think they made it slightly undersized because I noticed that like uh, it, it fit a little too easily into his hand. Not quite loose. It, it grips enough, but it doesn't. You can see how, like, I'm putting very little effort into moving this thing around. Let's try it in the left hand to see how it looks in the left. All right, so there we go. There it is in the left hand. Now, as far as accessories go, uh, old school fans will notice he's missing one very important accessory, and that's the gas can backpack. But uh, if you really want to have a gas can backpack for this guy, uh, I do know that Gridiron Studios makes one of those. So go check out their website, and you can order one if you really want to have one. Actually, I think there is a little bit of glove detailing in this now that I really look at it. It's got like a, a seam on the underside of it, but that's all I really see. There doesn't seem to be any like wrinkles or anything like that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and put the uh, this axe into his hand. And I kind of had to pull it open a little bit because of the end of the baseball bat there. but uh. That's what he looks like holding the axe. Yeah, the, uh, going back to looking at my old Storm Shadow figure, yeah, it definitely is in those hands because those gloves have pads on them. So, so for whatever reason, they sculpted him with archer hands. I don't know why. So, but uh, it, it still looks pretty cool. So I don't mind so much. So yeah, that's what he looks like holding the axe, which, like I said, mine unfortunately is a little warped. So I'm going to try to straighten that out with the hairdryer when the video is over. But yeah, there we go with that. Let's move on. Because now we want to go to the accessory that really gave him his name. He's Buzzer because he has a chainsaw. Not a buzz saw, which, you know, but I guess Chainer isn't as good of a name. So <laughs> so he's, he's buzz, Buzzer. So there we go. We'll go ahead and get the uh, the top handle into his other hand. So it's a little bit more of a traditional chainsaw design than what the original figure came with, because that one was almost set up more like a rifle or something. And he was apparently just supposed to hold it with the one hand. But this one, he does hold it with two hands, like uh, a person would actually hold a chainsaw. And uh, it doesn't seem to want to grip this handle very well. It keeps popping out anytime I try to move his arms. But it grips at the top well enough that you should be able to hold it like that. I want to try to get it into a, a more realistic position as somebody would, would hold a chainsaw. So yeah, once I get the blade straightened out, I think that'll look really cool. But yeah, so that's what Buzzer looks like with the chainsaw. So I'm a little disappointed that he doesn't have a backpack because he should have that gas can backpack. But other than that, they did a really good job with uh, gave him gave him some nice little accessories that are, are, are little extras as far as like the axe. I like the axe. I like the axe better even than I like this thing. So uh, if if it hadn't have come with this thing and had only come with the axe, I'd be I'd be talking about how uh, 
how I, I thought that was an improvement, but he comes with both. So that's, that's probably the best of both worlds. Right. So, uh, and he does have the little sheriff's badge on there and the dog tags probably taken from some poor soldier. He's, uh, killed some poor sheriff's deputy he took out, got, uh, crossbones on the belt buckle and the leather cod piece. So, uh, so yeah, they did a good job with them. Got a lot of the the details of the characters in. You can see even at the butterfly joint, they they've sculpted a new butterfly joint, so it's got so it looks like torn shirt sleeves. So that's cool. So uh, I think they did a good job with Buzzer. I think there are a few things that I would have done differently. I, I definitely would have included the backpack. And another thing about it not having the backpack is if you had to come with a backpack, they could have given us storage, like maybe little little clips to hold the the flail and the the axe here but as it is there's just no place to put these if he's just holding his chainsaw so you just gotta kind of set them aside and one of the things i've really liked about the classified figures so far is that they do a good job i'm gonna turn off this lamp for a second maybe then it looks like it's kind of flashing them out a little bit so we can get a different sort of take on them but yeah, one of the things that I've really liked about the classified figures so far is that, you know, there's always a place to store the weapons. Usually if 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 a figure comes with a a certain amount of accessories, there's there's places to store that equipment on the figure or on the backpack, and I don't see any place to put like any other place that that you could possibly put that axe or that that flail. So that's a little disappointing. Uh but like I said, Don Menard. Well, so I've been I've been downloading a lot of their stuff lately. But uh, but uh, Gridiron Studios has a buzzer kit where they have a backpack and it comes with its own version of the flail and uh, all that stuff has uh, places to store it on there. So go over to their website if you want to pick up a uh, a complement of accessories to to fit this guy. So uh, I'm happy with how this turned out though. I mean, like, like I got a lot of nitpicks about it. I mean, you heard me make a lot of nitpicks about it. But for the most part, it's still a figure that I think turned out really well. And, and I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, are there things they could have done better? Sure. But uh, it's still a pretty solid figure. And it gets a recommend from me. So that's it for this episode. I've been talking about him for like a half hour. And uh, like I said, I don't normally do episodes on Sunday. But I did one today because got a lot of stuff coming this week and i want to try to work through it so uh hopefully this will still get some views uh even though like i said i normally don't get a lot of views when i do a video on sunday so if you enjoyed it i'm gonna ask you to uh share this video on your social media so more people can see it because and that, that'll maybe help me beat the sunday curse that'll be fun if you did enjoy this video uh please make sure that you like and subscribe and i'll find you stuff down below if you want to see me uh talk about more action figures and uh, I'm also uh, doing my Batman the Animated Series watch-alongs. So uh, those are going quite nice. Uh, and uh, we get we got a lot of cool episodes to get to on that. And Mask of the Phantasm is coming up. So we'll be watching uh, that movie. So uh, good times ahead. That's pretty much it for this episode, though. We will talk to you next time. Bye.